right, hey y'all, it's Miss Summers with our first asynchronous day of the spring semester 2021. Um, today we're going to be talking about measurements and it's our first day taking notes. So before we get started in the actual note process, I wanted to just set forth some expectations that I have regarding notes, okay? So first off, the purpose of notes is that you interact with the material. Okay, the more you interact with material, the more likely that you're going to A, keep it in your long-term memory so that you can remember it later, and B, um, you're going to be able to be, blah, 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 be able to make connections with other, other topics, okay? So we want to build those connections within our noggins, okay? So what I've done for notes is I've provided an outline that's going to go along with each set. And you'll have these in person as well. All right. Um, if you're in person, I'll have them already printed out for you. If you're at home, you can print them out yourself or download them or whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. Okay. So let me show you what these outlines look like. So here's today's page. It's January 6th. That's how you got here. Um, the outline will be this um, document. It'll be a PDF. And I have it already pulled up on this next tab. And it looks like this. So we'll have the goal up here, which is what, what are the notes for? What are, why am I taking these notes? What do I want to know at the end? And then I have it divided into questions and then spaces for answers. All right. These questions are going to be the focus of each slide, and I will refer to these throughout the notes. Okay, because again, the whole point of this, we want to know this because we're using this information to solve problems or answer questions. All right. Um, these outlines also have some diagrams that will be useful that I will refer to um, and space for you to write. All right. So you can download this onto your computer. And um, if you have a application where you can edit PDFs, you can download a copy, edit it directly on there. You can type on it. Or if, if you are me, what I would do, I would just print it out and then scribble on it like I normally would. Um, because I like to physically write things. That's how I, that's one of the ways that I learn. I like writing things. Let me exit out of that for just a quick second. Okay, things that we're not, things that we're not going to do with the notes are things that I don't necessarily think that are helpful um, and that I noticed some students doing last semester um, were screenshots. Screenshots, in my professional opinion, are not that great when it comes to taking notes. Let me explain why. Okay, number one, you have the PowerPoint right here. Okay, you can access that PowerPoint any day of the week, anytime you want. You know, you're like, you know what, what was slide five of the measurements notes? It's right there. Okay, you taking a screenshot of that is redundant because you already have the whole PowerPoint. There's no point in taking a picture of it. All you're doing is wasting space on your computer, okay? The second reason I don't think screenshots are a really good way to take notes is because whenever I screenshot something, I just do shift command four or shift command three or whatever it is, all right? I'm not actually interacting with the material. When I'm writing something down, when I write, you know, measurements need a unit and a number okay my brain has to process that as i write it all right or as i type it all right but if you just take a screenshot your brain didn't isn't going to associate the motion of you clicking those three keys with learning something okay so screenshots are not going to be an acceptable form of notes okay if you are like, if you do the outline and you're like, I really don't like this, I'd rather just write stuff down from the slides, that's okay too. If you'd rather type it out, that's okay too. Okay, but just taking a picture or not taking notes at all is not going to be helpful to you in the long run. All right, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our notes, shall we? So all the notes, oh, it is shift command three. Shift command four is for part of the screen. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to put myself in the corner. I will be back. 
All right, you click this button uh, for the PowerPoint. I already have it pulled up here, though. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the nature of science and the international system of units. Basically, how do we measure stuff? Why do measurements... Why, why are there different ways of measuring things? And which way are we going to use? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our first question, why do we measure things? Why do we need to be able to measure things? So if you were in person, I would ask for suggestions and you all would call out, you know, situations where measurement is important. So maybe construction, if you're building something, you wanna make sure that your materials are a certain length width, whatever, so that the structure you're building is physically sound. Um, if we're talking about medicine, okay, so if you get sick or whatever, okay, measuring is important when it comes to treatment. If you're if you're taking medication, you know, certain certain people would require different amounts of medicine. You know, what is enough for you know a five year old? Enough medicine for a five year old would not be enough for somebody who is an adult, and vice versa. An adult dose of a medication would be too much for a child, so you want to make sure those are measured out properly, okay? So, measuring is all around us. We're going to measure stuff. Hard science. Collecting data. Woohoo! All right? So, what do measurements need? What, what makes a measurement a measurement? A measurement is going to need... Let me get this green. A measurement needs both a number and a units, a number and a units. If you just have a number by itself, it doesn't make sense. So let me give you an example. Okay, let's talk about height. Okay, if I just said I'm five, that doesn't really make sense when it comes to height. Five what? Five hands, five feet, five meters? I'm five feet, by the way, five foot. All right, that unit makes that number mean something. Okay, a foot is a certain length. So by saying I'm five feet tall or five foot tall, take five of those feet. That makes sense. You have your measurement now. A unit by itself doesn't make sense. Okay, so again, if we're talking about height and I just said I'm meters tall, that, that doesn't make any sense. How many meters tall? So you want a number and a unit. And we'll talk about units um, here in just a second. All right, our next question, we're going to look at, we'll come back to units here in a moment, but let's talk about precision and accuracy. All right, so you have a diagram that looks similar to this on your, on your um, outline. The one I have is slightly different. That's okay. All right, but when we're measuring things, we want to be both precise and accurate, and those two things don't necessarily mean the same, okay? If you are precise, in your measurements, okay? In order for measurements to be precise, you have to have a group of them. Precise measurements are really close to one another, okay? So if I had, um, if I were measuring um, the weight of a lizard and I measured it three different times and each of those times, each of those numbers is really close. Like one time I weighed my lizard and it was you know, 74 grams, and then it was 74.2 grams, and then it was 73.9 grams. Those are very precise because they're very close to one another. Kind of like in this diagram here, all these little arrows, okay, this on this bullseye, all these arrows are really close to one another. Now, they're not where they should be, but they're really close, so that makes it precise. Accuracy is how close your measurement is to the actual value or the re the accepted value um, of what you're measuring, okay? That's how close you are to reality. All right, so in this diagram, we have low precision because these arrows are far away from each other. They're not close. And we also have low accuracy because they're not on the bullseye, all right? Here, we have low accuracy. You know, none of the arrows are on the bullseye where they should be but they're very precise because they're all close to one another. All right, in this diagram, we have high accuracy because they're all 
around the bullseye where they should be, but the measurements aren't close to each other. So this would be low. So you can have high accuracy, but low precision. Ideally, in a perfect world, and this is what we strive for, we want high accuracy. We want our measurements to be real or true, and we want high precision. We want our measurements to be close to one another. Okay, so that's the difference between accuracy and precision. So let's jump back. I know there's a lot to write here. Let's just take it one at a time. Let's go back to that unit, okay? Measurements need a number and a unit, a number and a unit, a number and a unit, okay? What units are we going to use? We're going to use the SI system. So what does the SI system stand for? It stands for system, or system, I'm not sure what these accent marks, I know accent marks change pronunciations of words, but I don't speak French, I'm sorry. System International. So it's the International System of Units. That's what it stands for. Who uses it? Scientists. Measurements. Yeah. Scientists are going to use the SI system. And it is used pretty much worldwide with the exception of the United States and like two other countries. All right. I don't know what those two other countries are. I don't expect you to know them. If you do know them, good for you. All right, why do scientists and the rest of the world, why do they use this SI as opposed to what the United States uses? Why would, why would everybody agree to this one system? Well, it's because these measurements are easier to convert, okay? Measurements are easier to convert in the SI system. You just have to know how to multiply and divide by 10. Super, super easy. In the United States, we use what's called the English or standard system. Okay, so English system would be like feet, inches, pounds. Um, trying to think of another one. Gallons, ounces. Okay, so think about how we measure things like at the doctor's office or at the grocery store or whatever. That's standard system. If we were to go to Europe or... Asia or Africa or any pretty much anywhere else in the world and we were wanting to look at you know the height or length of something we wouldn't use inches and feet we would use centimeters and meters we wouldn't use gallons we would say liters we wouldn't say pounds or ounces we would say kilograms or grams all right so that's what the SI system is It is easier, here we go, we'll come back to that in a second. It is easier to remember, so now we're at the, the question, why is the SI system easier to remember than the standard or English system? The SI system is easier to remember because it's based on the number 10. It's based on the number 10. Okay, the English system, there's a bunch of random numbers, okay? So we're talking about inches and feet. Well, there's, there's 12 inches in a foot, and there's 3 feet in a yard. So how many inches are in a yard? Well, you've got to multiply by 12 and then by 3 and all this other nonsense. All right. In the SI system, it's all based on 10. There's 10 millimeters in a centimeter. There's 10 centimeters in a decimeter, there's 10 decimeters in a meter, so on and so forth. All right, so let's look at the prefixes that we're going to use. All right, and again, this, this um, table is in your notes. I don't need you to necessarily memorize every single one of them. I do expect you to know the difference between like centi and milli and kilo. Those are stems that you should be familiar with, probably from middle school, from um, ELA. In middle school, you learn stems for a reason. It's because we use them in words. Okay? We just throw the same prefix in front of different units. All right? But it works with everything. 
So, let me give you an example. A unit of length in the SI system is a meter. Okay, a meter is about three-ish feet long. Give you an idea. Okay. A decimeter, so deci means one-tenth, there's 10 decimeters in one meter. Centi, like century, centi means 100. So a centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. All right, if we're talking about grams now, gram is a unit of mass, how much stuff there is. All right, so there's one gram, a decigram is one-tenth of a gram. You would need 10 decigrams to make a gram. A centigram would be one one-hundredth of a gram. You would need 100 centigrams to make a gram, okay? So that's what those prefixes are for. Again, the ones that I care about you knowing that you're going to see more of in our class is going to be kilo, which is a thousand. So like a kilogram is a thousand grams or a kilometer is a thousand meters, centi, and milli, okay? So, we know that measurements need a number and a unit. We want to make sure that our measurements are precise, they're close to one another, and that they're accurate, they're close to reality. All right, in science, we're going to use the SI system, okay? SI so you may be asking yourself this, SI is the metric system. Metric and SI are interchangeable. They're synonyms. Okay? And we talked about the prefixes. Now let's look at types of metrics. How are we going to measure things in SI? How, what units are we going to use? How are we going to use them? All right? So our first type of measurement is length. Length is a distance between two points. It can be length, width, or width, height, or depth. So if you have like a piece of paper in front of you, you can measure one side, that's a length. Another side, that's another length. All right. The basic unit is a meter. So again, we can make it smaller. So obviously, if I have like an envelope, I'm not going to measure that in meters because an envelope's really small. So I'm going to use something like a centimeter. Remember, centi is one one hundredth. 100 centimeters makes one meter, all right? And then, of course, with length, we can also use, um, use that to calculate area, which is just length times width. If you're multiplying that, your units, it would be the unit but squared, so meter squared, centimeter squared, etc. We won't really do a ton with area, all right? So that's length. Mass. Mass is our next metric measurement um, that we'll talk about. Mass is how much matter you have in an object. All right. So some people will say mass and weight kind of interchangeably. Weight and mass are similar. They are related, but they're not the exact same. Okay. Um, before we get, before I talk about that, let me just come back here and talk about the basic unit. It is gram. All right, so one gram is our basic unit of mass. Um, when we're measuring like the mass of like a larger object, we would probably use something like kilograms. Okay, one kilogram is about two, 2.2 .2 pounds. All right, so anyway, back to mass and weight. Um, mass is how much stuff you're made out of. Weight is the pull of gravity on that stuff, okay? So the larger the mass is, the bigger that pull of gravity is going to be, the bigger that weight's going to be, okay? But if your pull of gravity, if the force of gravity changes because, like, you're on a different planet or something, that will affect your weight, but not your mass, okay? The only way to change the mass of something is either to add matter or take matter away. All right, our next type of measurement is volume. 
Volume is the amount of stuff, or not the amount of stuff, excuse me, it's the amount of space you take up. So mass is stuff, volume is space. Remember that for tomorrow. The basic unit of volume is a liter, okay? Now, we are usually going to use liters when we're talking about a, um, a liquid or a gas. If we're talking about a solid, like I want to know how much space my phone takes up, I would calculate the volume using the length times width times height, and that would be in centimeters or meters cubed. Okay, so it depends on if it's a solid or um, a liquid. The nice thing about metric, though, one centimeter cubed is the same as one milliliter. Okay, so it ends up being the same, same amount of stuff, which is super nice, super helpful. Okay. And our last type of measurement that we are going to use a lot of in earth science is temperature. So temperature is the amount of kinetic energy in an object, okay? So if you remember from like seventh grade science or whatever, I don't know when you would have learned this, everything is made up of atoms, okay? Atoms are constantly moving around. They're zipping, zipping, zapping around, okay? The more they move, the more kinetic energy they have, okay? What that, what we perceive that as is heat, all right? So the more these atoms are moving around, the faster they're moving, the more heat they're producing, the higher the temperature it's going to be, all right? So obviously we're going to use a thermometer to measure temperature, and we are going to use Celsius, instead of Fahrenheit. We're going to use Celsius. So when you turn on the weather channel um, or the news and they're talking about the weather and they're saying, oh, it's going to be like 74 degrees, um, 78 degrees, whatever. Okay, that's in Fahrenheit. We use Celsius because it's easy to use water or it, it matches water really nicely. Um, Celsius, obviously you can be below zero Celsius. You can be in the negative and you can be above 100. Um, but if you're water at zero degrees Celsius, that means you're frozen. That's freezing. That would be 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're water and it's 100 degrees Celsius, that's when you start to boil and become steam. That would be 212 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so that's why Celsius is used. There are a couple other different ways to measure temperature. Um, when you get to chemistry, you would talk about like Kelvin and all that other good stuff, um, but we're gonna use Celsius, okay? All right, so that concludes our notes for today. So we talked about why we use measurements. Measurements need a unit and a number. Um, we looked at precision versus accuracy. Why do we use the SI system because it's easy to remember, it's based on the number 10. And then we looked at our different measurements for a length, volume, mass, and temperature. Okay, so if you need to go back and rewrite anything down, feel free to do that. If not, I will see you tomorrow when we talk about density.